I want to take a look at logic with you. I want to look at what logic is and how it functions because it has become such a great part of our society and of how we deal with everything. And of course technology plays a big part in that, science plays a big part in that. We are moving away from religion and moving towards science, or so we think. And I mentioned it before, but artificial intelligence is a nice example of this, where we seem to think we can have logic be purified into something that will tell us things that are true, that will tell us things that are correct, that will tell us things that make things easier for us, I guess. Um, so I want to take a look at that with you. And, of course, the usual disclaimers apply. I don't know anything. This whole thing is bullshit. I'm just talking. I'm insane. Um, I'm not logical at all. And none of this has any value for you whatsoever, even if I were to say something that you would think is of value, because it has no meaning to you. This, at best, is a general pointing at something that for you needs to be made specifically tailored to you and your situation. You need to integrate the, this thing. You need to assimilate with it. There's nothing here for you unless you make it your own. And I cannot do it. You cannot even really do it, but you can try doing it, right? And I don't like to say try, because just do. But you could say that you can dance around it and see what happens. And so if you hear anything that you might think is valuable, don't start bothering me with it, bother yourself with it. If you don't agree with something, that's fine. If you agree with something, it's also fine. It doesn't matter, it's all about what you do with it, all right? Use me as something to have made clear within yourself what it is that you think about whatever, all right? All right, logic, 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 logic man's best friend and I do mean the man in this one because the way I see it logic is created by men and wielded by men uh, more often than women and of course in this society we are confusing each other greatly in what roles we fulfill and what or we what we are or aren't as beings and we should all be equal and the same, and the fact that we are completely different shouldn't matter at all. And, of course, money and power have a great allure, and everyone's trying to get some, right? Because it will confirm themselves as being the wonderful beings they believe themselves to be. So this thing is becoming general to the whole public. Um, the thing is that when I talk to young people, they are very hung up on logic and it makes a lot of sense and I will hopefully explain that a little bit with you, to you. Um, but they're not hung up on it as it is useful, but they're actually fighting against it. And this makes a lot of sense. Um, and that's just basically what I want to try and address here is what is logic and how could it serve you or what is its function in this world or life that you live. Now, the first thing I think is important for you to understand, not for yourself as to agree with me, but to understand where I come from is to realize that how do I look at logic? Well, I see logic as a purely cultural thing, meaning language is logic, right? Now, it's interesting that, for example, with mathematics, 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 I don't know how you say it. It sounds weird when I say it, um, right? There's this debate, whether it's universal, right? That is, is the universe giving the math or is math interpreting the universe, right? Where does logic come from? And if we were to communicate with aliens that do not speak our languages at all and have no capability of doing so, 
math would be the only language you could use <coughs> where we would think there is a common ground, right? If they see a triangle, they probably know a triangle or, or something like this. Of course, I know nothing and I'm very ignorant, so perhaps I'm mistaken completely in this. At, you know, and if that is so, then perhaps it's just entertaining to see me fumble my way through this as if it were logical. All right, so there's this thing to logic, right? I think I mentioned somewhere before that the way I see science isn't that they're using logic to discover nature, it's that they're discovering nature to use their logic or to tweak their logic. So we are biased in our logic, right? We have language, we have thoughts, and we have <clears throat> all these ways of saying that something makes sense. And we don't want to, <coughs> we don't want it to be subjective, right? We don't want logic to be something we feel. We want it to be something that is so. We like facts. We like certainty. We, we say logic is um, external to ourselves. And that's why it's cultural, right? It's, it's the outside of yourself thing where perhaps a long time ago we were just communicating with grunts and sounds and, and, and waving our arms. We are now talking to, to each other and we have words that they mean something. When I say this word to you, you know what I mean, right? Well, not right at all. In fact, it creates a lot of confusion to think that you would know what I mean because I don't even know what I mean and I'm just trying to do my best to create some sort of narrative that hints at something that might be perceived as something I see or understand or that is logical in a way. Of course, I am completely biased in what I say is logic because logic is serving me to protect myself and to build myself up and as such I will bend it in whatever way necessary to make it come out correct, right? And I will come back to that pretty soon um, in, in a separate video on how this works and how people are biased that just confirms itself all the time. Um, so logic is an interesting thing and then I think I first discovered how this works not when I understood this the way I do now or the way I see it now but more as in as a practical thing um, was with poker. I, I used to play a lot of poker and the, the development of a poker player is an interesting journey as it has so much to do with all the things that we deal with as people, right? It's condensed into a small contextualized area but it still has to do with lying and truth and seeing things you cannot see and anticipation and most of all money, right? It has to do a lot with money. So it's a very interesting thing where both skill and luck play a role and as such the whole human drama plays itself out in a few rounds of bidding and guessing and um, trying to get the upper hand. On the one hand through logic because it's odds that, you know, there's 52 cards, you know a few, there's a few you don't, so there is this statistics that come into play that can help you guide your playing on the one hand. On the other hand, you're a human being with emotions playing against other human beings with emotions and so this thing becomes exponentially deep where anything could be possible and all you really have is your idea about who you're playing with and how they use the logic and emotions in their favor or against their favor. And logic here is a very interesting thing. Um, because let's say you are a starting poker player and I, I will quickly draw a model, hopefully it's something that you could see on the board, which is one of the first models, do you see this on the board? I hope you do. Uh, one of the first models that I uh, ever called my own, which has to do with the development of skill, which has to do with how does one go from becoming an apprentice to becoming a master at something, right? And this could be for poker, but it certainly also goes for 
being a human being, right? I, I, I think of this mostly as the child and the adult, the theory and the practice, the, the formal and the informal or the improvisation. And logic certainly has a huge role in this. Because what happens when you start playing poker or when you are awakening within yourself and having to deal with life is that you have a certain potential. And this potential enables you to do all kinds of things, right? You could say that if you are born as a human, you have a potential to do anything you want. Your body can do many, many things and your mind helps you to do, actually do those things. So, as a human, your, your, your breadth of possible actions at any time is almost unlimited. You, you, you cannot even oversee what you could do with your body in this place and in this time. So, what we do is we are not just, you know, humans in ourselves, we are living in a society, is that we help this new being try and get a grip on itself. And the way to shape that or to, to facilitate its shaping is by limitation. So where when you are born you can do anything you like, you have your full potential and anything is possible. You might pee in your mother's face, you might shit while you are wherever, wearing whatever or not wearing whatever. Um, you can you can you can make any sound, right? You're you're still learning all these things. Of course, you're you're developing uh, from a baby into a, uh, a child into a young adult, and so so your ability changes just as much as you change. But it's it's pretty much infinite what you could do, and this is very scary because if you can do anything, then what should you do, right? And the same goes with poker. If you can play any hand at any time then what is it that you do? And what you do is you look for a way to narrow down your possible actions. And as a child, we do this for you. You have your parents, you have your school, you have your culture that will tell you that these things are actually right to do and other things are actually wrong to do, right? You should do logical things. You should do things that make sense. So we do not pee in our mother's faces, if we can help it, we pee firstly in the diaper and then hopefully later on the toilet, right? It makes sense because why would you pee on the floor? Because then someone would either have to clean it up or it would become really smelly. So that's not very logical. So we say, well, that makes a lot of sense. So peeing in your diaper or on the toilet is just the most logical thing to do. So we don't even probably register that that is a narrowing, a narrowing of our actions and we see it as perfectly sensible to do so. However, by having said it and acted in accordance with it, what you have really done is taken away freedom of action from this person, right? You have limited the child into saying, you can only do this. If you need to pee, this is how you pee. And we say, well, it's not my opinion that it should be so. It just, it makes sense. It's, it's completely logic. I mean, why would you want to have pee on the floor? Why would you blah, de, blah, de, blah. We come up with all these reasons that, in fact, tries to just keep confirming to ourselves that we have made the valid choice. We have made the right choice. We are logical. And as such, we have limited our actions and are now only able to do a specific thing, which you could say you're not doing yourself at all anymore. You're acting the act, right? You're doing it as in you are the one peeing at a certain time in a certain place, but there's no freedom of action there. There's no freedom of choice. You're not free to do whatever you want, right? And then this is just an example with the peeing. This goes with many, many things, right? The starting poker player wants to play good poker. And so he looks for the rules of poker and he tries to understand what does it take to be a good poker player. And 
as such, he is narrowing down his freedom of action into a limited set of possible actions, and he no longer is in charge of what he does, but he serves this thing, this logical thing, this idea where adding up the statistics, adding up this, that, and the other thing, the logical move would be to do this. And now you are artificial intelligence. Now you are living in a virtual reality. Now you are a robot. Do you understand? You are not acting, you're not engaging with whatever's going on. You're engaging by limiting what is actually possible, even though the true possibilities are endless. So you come to a point where logic isn't the thing you use because you are so smart that you can use logic for your own benefit. It becomes a situation where you are the slave to logic. And it actually does not enable you, but disables you to do things or not do things, right? So where does this come from? Where does this logic come from, right? Where, where, where does language come from? Where does thinking logically come from, right? And it's interesting that I don't think it's possible to be an aware being without logic. So I'm not saying logic is bad. Not at all. I'm, I'm trying to explain to you the function of logic, and most notably in that, that logic is not something that you hold, but that it holds you. Right? You are the servant of logic. Logic isn't your servant. And what I think in this world is problematic is that we have emphasized logic so much and have made it the ends of what we are doing here, right? As long as we are logic, you should feel right about what you're doing. And I think what people are experiencing is that even though they do things that are logical, they work hard, they make money, they have success, they have the adulation of other people, they have a partner, they have children, they have whatever they're supposed to have, but they're not feeling it, right? Because feeling, not the brain, but the body, and separating those two is somewhat of an illusion that can really backfire, but if you were to say that logic is something that you think, and feeling is something that your body does, so to say, then you might think that something is logical, but if you do not feel it, where does it leave you, right? It leaves you battling yourself. It leaves you in dissonance with yourself. It leaves you in a place where everything says this is supposed to be right, and everything you feel says, I don't like this, it's wrong, right? Wrong? And this is, of course, what is going on, right? The culture is prescribing what success looks like. The culture is telling you what you should or shouldn't do, what should or should not make you happy, what should make you sad. And your emotions, your feelings, are not to be trusted. They're not right. They're not logical. Right? We are emotional beings, they say, and kind of try to distance themselves from that saying, sometimes you feel things that just don't make sense, right? As if it's a bad thing, as if feelings aren't there to be felt, right? Thinking makes sense, feeling doesn't. And that's exactly what I'm trying to explain to you. But what I'm trying to add to this is that if you stop thinking you're a logical being, as a complete being, then you can come to a place where logic can be part of what you are without it dominating you. If you don't need things to make sense, then all of a sudden they start making sense. When you need things to make sense, you're trapped. You have a problem. You have only problems. 
And the only logical thing to do is to find solutions. And every time you find a solution, it will give you a short fix saying, yes, yes, this is indeed the correct thing. And then it will turn out to be no, no, no. It is now a new problem. Right? Maybe you have experienced this in your life and you can relate to this. And it's very difficult in a culture where logic and, 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 and knowledge and wisdom and science and, and computers and technology are, are becoming so dominant to, 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 to realize that they're only half of the thing. They're very one-sided. Right? Of course, there is this new, renewed interest into meditation and mindfulness, and, right? which hopefully for some people creates a certain balance. Although, why hopefully? Why not leave the unbalance, right? Why not go through the thing instead of, instead of trying to pull it back? If we just focus enough on logic and make everything logical, we will start to see how illogical that is. And maybe we get appreciation for the levels that are going on that we are creating and a better sense on how to deal with them and end up looking through them because logic means nothing at all. Just like feelings don't mean nothing at all by themselves. It's the, right, the, the thinking is the certainty and the feeling is the uncertainty, so to say. And sometimes it's the other way around. Sometimes we feel something for very certain, but we can't make sense of it. And it's this game that's going on between those, this feeling into thinking and this thinking into feeling that creates the propulsion, that creates the drama, that creates this thing where we now are moving. We now have a game. We are a game. And we are playing it. And there's things going on. And things can go wrong and they can go right or they can feel wrong or feel right. Of course, all of this is just judgment. All of this is just our own interpretation of our own perception of signals and impulses that are going on that we filter and, and selectively look at or ignore. So there's nothing really going on, but we think that it is, and we can try to make sense of it, or we can use our senses and experience it. And because we have such a need for outcome and rightness and states, right? We want to be happy. We want to be this, that, or the other thing, right? This is what our goal is. I want to be this. Not I want to be, no, I want to be this. Because the being is, is a given. It's entitled already, right? Of course I'm alive. What else should I be, dead? So we take for granted we are alive, and now we're trying to make sense of it. Right? And, and some people might look at my videos and say, he's so arrogant. And the way I think about it is, regardless of whether I agree or not with that statement, is how arrogant it is to think logic has meaning. Right? I, I should stop saying right, right, right. Because, and why should I stop? Because it's not logical to say right all the time? I'm saying right, so it should be right. I'm sorry for this little thing. You see, this is how I distract myself. <laughs> what was I saying? I don't know. And that's how it works. That's a good example of how people operate. We think we have a narrative within us. And we think it is a consistent thing. Where there's a story. And this story can be judged. And as such there can be things that can happen that are good. And there are things that can happen that are bad. And it's up, uh, it's up to us to control this narrative. right? Not only as a narrative within us, but to do things or to not do things to influence this story, because this story is real, and it needs to be a good story. And to allow the idea 
to live that, in fact, there is no control, there is no story, there is just experience, is a very scary thing. Because what's the meaning if you are the meaning animal? If there should be meaning, then there should be logic, because I cannot just choose some sort of meaning and say, well, that's what I chose, I don't even know it's right. Because how would I defend that? How would I, how would I come to the rescue of this whole thing? What, what right do I have, right? And that's what I wanted to say, this arrogance that I see where logic exists within illogic, right? This universe exists within the unexplainable. Give scientists the Big Bang, and after that they can rule supreme. After that they can explain everything. If you would just give them the Big Bang, just accept that. Just don't worry about where it came from. Don't worry how it got started. Just accept that it was there and it got started. And after that, I know everything. So we have invented this language and we have invented this way that it follows from A to B, right? Like there's separateness between action and consequence, between impulse and output, right? We can chop things up with our weapon, this, this sharp mind that we have. And we are so arrogant to say that we can oversee our own intelligence, that we can oversee our own logic, like it isn't built on itself. Like we don't use words to explain what words mean, right? Right. That to me is arrogant. To think you know anything and that you can say anything that makes any sense, to me, seems like the most arrogant thing to do. To not realize and be humble to the fact that you are within something that you cannot explain. The thing is bigger than you are. You are missing something. It instantly turns this whole thing into magic. It instantly turns this whole thing into a dream. It instantly turns this whole thing into something that happens to you and not something that you make happen. Do you understand? You don't know what's going on and you can't know what's going on. And because of that, it doesn't matter what's going on. And the best way I found to approach it is as a game, to play it, to commit to it, to have fun with it. Because you do not know how you got here and you do not know where you are going to go once it's done. All you know is you are here and it's bigger than you are, even though you might be it. You, you don't know <laughs> and you can't know and you will never know and it doesn't really matter. Because now they explain the Big Bang. Now what? Will it take you away from where you are now? Will it take you out of your body, out of your house, out of wherever you are? No. Will it change anything? No. It is exactly what it's supposed to be, to make it as real as it can be. Because if you understood it, it would be nothing. You would look through it. Oh, it's just, we're just in a, in a VR game. Well, fuck this. I'm going to jump from the building. All right, so we need a new game, a better game, where you forget this. Oh, the Big Bang is really this. Oh, okay, well, I see what it is. It's just infinite universes. Ha! If someone would have just told me. It's one big, one big black hole, and it's all black holes, and we're all black holes of... Right? It's a black hole creating black holes all the way down. That's the answer. We finally understood. And we live on the event horizon. That's the only thing that's going on. Well, geez, thank you, scientists, for explaining. Now I can go back to just having fun and living the life the way I always wanted it, because we're all black holes. Is, is this what you think will happen? I don't know. But do know that if you think the answer lies within the logic, then the logic has you. You are a servant to logic. And it's something that I will come back to when I look at mastery and, and, and the artist and improvisation and the adulthood, because you are not logic. You're not logic at all. If you have emotions, your logic is tainted. 
You cannot be logic. You can never be logic. You can be logical. You can strive for logic. And it's, it can serve you. There's purpose. There's a way to engage with some power of prediction. So if you can influence something, then maybe uh, it can serve you a little bit. But don't try to act like you own this, like you know this, like you are on top of this. You are not at top of this at all. You are within it. So it has you anyway. But at least be open to it. All right. I think this is a nice first setup for this subject. I hope there's something here for you. If not, who knows? And I wish you good luck with it. Thank you.